Hi, my name is Nick Stillings. I'm a customer success manager for Microsoft. For our March 21st, 2022 session of Meeting Mondays, we focused on large structured meetings and some best practices to manage that experience. When I have a meeting that big, it's a good idea to go into meeting options and put some guardrails up around the attendee experience, maybe disabling attendee video or even attendee chat and specifying other people on my event team to have formal roles like a co-organizer, which is a feature that's coming in 2022, or presenter, ensuring everyone else is an attendee and can minimize the disruption that they can cause. So we stepped through some capabilities focused on roles and settings inside of meeting options. We looked at how I could bring up those settings live during a meeting and manage them. That's a really nice thing to do if maybe part of the meeting I want to have a lot of moderation in place and the rest of it I want to have be a little bit more open and collaborative. And then finally, we went through some best practices for presenters and organizers. After the session, we shared out a one pager. So if you go to aka.ms slash meeting Mondays, this is downloadable from there. This is also posted in the Microsoft Teams superheroes community inside of the Microsoft tenant. I'll show you the link for that at the very end. Let's take a look at this and we'll, we'll step through. So the first thing I referenced was it's a good idea to go into meeting options and choose a couple of people to be presenters. They can help you be moderators. And when this rolls out in 2022, we'll also have the option to specify up to 10 co-organizers. A co-organizer is someone who can go in and adjust the meeting settings, but isn't the person who scheduled the meeting. So it's gonna be a real nice capability if I schedule a meeting and go on vacation, or I'm working with say a marketing team for a public meeting and three or four of us are managing those or are managing a series. Um, let's look at these. I'll switch over to my meeting options. And here's the options for a meeting that I'm working on. Uh, the way I got here was I went into Teams onto my calendar, opened up my meeting details, and then depending on your Zoom, I'm zoomed in uh, really high uh, for my uh, recording here, but I click the three dots and that takes me to meeting options. If you're scheduling your meeting in Microsoft Outlook, you can go into the meeting settings in Outlook. There's a little button there that says meeting options on the toolbar. Click that and it opens this uh, same information in a dialog in Outlook. So the setting, the new one that's coming is this co-organizer setting. It works the same as scheduling presenters do. Um, I have to have the person I want to select listed on my invitation. And so it's picking from the people who are invited, who I can make co-organizers, who will make Chad our co-organizer for this session. And then for um, who can present, if I click that, I can also specify um, who I want to be presenters. In this case, I'm going to say just myself and other co-organizers are going to be the only presenters. So that's my first setting, is to go in and just kind of assign some roles inside the meeting. If I go back to the one pager and look down in the bottom right, there's a link to step-by-step -step help articles for each of those uh, capabilities, including that one that says roles in a team's meeting. That's a real nice summary of who can do what if they are an organizer, presenter, or attendee. Let's look at a couple other settings. So I've gone ahead and set up my event team. There's also some settings I can go in that put some guardrails up around the attendee experience. I'm gonna switch back over to my meeting options. And let's take a look at some of these attendee settings. So if I zoom in on these, let's just see what they are again. I've got the ability to turn on or off the microphone for attendees, the camera for attendees, and meeting chat and meeting reactions. So I like to leave the microphone on if it's going to be up to about 100 people or so. If it's going to be more than that, I just hard mute them. I can always right click on someone in the participant pane and unmute an individual. I like to use that in combination with the raise hand feature. So I have people raise their hand, they move to the top of the participant list automatically, then I can right click and unmute them. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the camera for attendees. 
I think this is a really important setting. It ensures that I don't have so much incoming video coming in and getting muxed inside of the team's client for the presenter that I don't overwhelm their computer trying to arrange like the together mode of view. So that's a best practice if you've got a really large meeting. Go ahead and turn off attendee camera, maybe attendee microphone, depending on how much interaction you want. The other one here is meeting chat. Um, you can go in and set that so it's only available when people join the meeting or even turn it off entirely. And I actually like to disable chat if I get more than 300 people and used the Manage Q&A app for Teams meetings instead. I think it gives me a little bit more of a moderated experience, and then I don't have any sync delays with the chat rendering when someone opens and closes the chat pane and they're waiting for that to, uh, to pop up. I think it's just a little bit cleaner experience. I always leave reactions enabled. Um, they're all positive, like a heart or a thumbs up, and it's just a nice way to have easy and engagement as uh, someone is presenting. So I'll go ahead and save that. And there I've saved my meeting options. I can also bring these meeting options up when I'm inside the meeting. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, here I've got my live meeting running. This is a demo, so I've just got one attendee, Megan, but let's zoom in and look at her really quick. You'll notice that she actually has her microphone and camera disabled. And then if I look in the bottom right, I can see chat is disabled as well too. Let's say we're doing a company all hands and the executive is talking. This is where I've got all of my attendee settings turned off to give me the most sort of control over the experience. It's really appropriate for like the one way portion maybe where we're getting an update from our CEO. Now Megan can still do a little bit of interaction because I allowed reactions. So if she goes in and raises her hand, we'll see that pop up and then I as one of the presenters can right click on her and say, allow mic, and that'll let her come off mute. She can talk, and then I can mute her once she's done, and she can lower her hand and we can continue. So there is some interaction that I've got still available, even when all those controls are in place, as long as I allow reactions. But I wanna change settings. So let's say our executive is done. We're now to open Q&A, the last 15 minutes of our company all hands. I'm gonna to go to more meeting options, and this brings up the same meeting option settings we were looking at a second ago in our browser. They're just in pane inside of the meeting. So I'm going to go in and uh, let's go ahead and allow everyone to come off mute if they want to. It doesn't take them off mute. It just lets them unmute. I'm going to leave camera disabled, but I'm going to go ahead and turn on chat and then click save. Now, the attendees are seeing a little pop-up that says your microphone is now enabled. And if I go back to the meeting chat, it's now enabled, it no longer says chat is off for this meeting. So as the organizer, I can hop into the meeting settings live here inside the meeting itself, make those adjustments on the fly. It's a nice way to turn on or off capabilities in mass as I progress through the meeting itself. So there I've used some settings to put some guardrails around the attendee experience, uh, hard muting my attendees, disabling their camera, maybe even turning off chat if it's more than 300 people. But I still want them to be able to engage and interact with the presenters. There are a couple of tools I can bring into the meeting to make that happen. The first is the polling app. This allows me to add quizzes or a word cloud or a multiple choice question that attendees can answer. And the second is the new moderated Q&A app. This is rolling out now in the spring into our commercial tenants and we'll have it out in the second half of 2022 in our government cloud in our government tenants. Let me show you what both of these look like. Here I'm back into the meeting details for the meeting that I'm scheduling. I can do this live during the meeting, but I find it's a good idea to set up these engagements before the meeting even starts. So I'm gonna go up here in meeting details and I'm clicking on the little plus sign across the toolbar at the top. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the polling app first. Now again, it's called Forms. Uh, we're about to change the name of this, but it's based on the Office Forms technology, but we found polls is actually a, a better term, at least in U.S. English. So we'll see this switch over to the word polls uh, a little farther along in the spring. I'll go ahead and save that. And this adds the app to the meeting. So now it's part of the meeting, just like chat or shared files were. It prompts me with a couple of getting started questions. If I want to select one of these, I can add them. Here, let's just pick one and say, go ahead and save that as a question. 
and let's make one too. I'll put in a word cloud and say, what city are you calling in from? I guess it's still a call, even on the Teams client. Down toward the bottom, I have a couple of options. If I want people to see the results, if I want it to be anonymous, if I want my other presenters to be able to change and co-author, we'll go ahead and save that. So there's our two polls coming in. And now to bring these up in the meeting, I've got two ways I can do it. I can just keep the meeting details window open here in the full Teams client and click launch. Or I can switch over to the meeting itself. Here it is. Click on polls. And I'll see them sitting here as well too. And then I can click launch. For people that are using the Teams desktop client, this will pop over the meeting stage so they can answer it. If you're on the mobile client, same thing. On the web client, we render it over here in chat and then they can answer it there. And then as I submit that, I'll see the results come in as people answer them. So polls and building in polls at certain parts of the meeting is a great way to kind of give everyone a chance to interact without risking the disruption of allowing everyone to come off mute or type into chat. The second tool I've got in my toolbox is the moderated Q&A app. Let's go take a look at that. I'm going to switch back over to meeting details. Click the plus sign again. So this is how I add apps into meetings. Q&A is the one that I want. You can search for Q&A and find it. Go ahead and click add. And I've got several settings here to pick from. And we're going to do a full session on the Q&A because it's the Q&A app because it's uh, enough moving parts here. It merits its own a uh, little bit of focus. This is going to pop up in the pane in the meeting. I can give my attendees a couple of options. Uh, I want them to be able to ask questions. Respond to conversations means they can reply to somebody else's question. If I'm doing this with a lot of collaboration and I've got subject matter experts out there besides me, this is a nice setting. We'll let anyone respond and then the person who asked the question can even check off what the best answer was. The third setting down here is moderation. I do prefer this for a really big meeting. Uh, this means questions are not published where everybody can see them unless I allow them to be. So let's add a little bit more control. I'm going to say you can't respond to other people's questions, but you can give it a thumbs up and react to it. And I don't want anybody to see any question until I look at it and approve it. Great. Let's go ahead and save it. Now, I like keeping the meeting details window that we're looking at here in the full Teams client open on a second monitor, if you have two monitors, because it just gives me a little bit more screen real estate to manage this experience as it starts to fill up when people are using it. Let's switch over to Teams and, and see what it looks like. So I'm going to go back over to the meeting. And so for the attendees, what they can do is click here where it says Q&A and then ask a question. Will this be recorded? I'll go ahead and drop that in and post it. Now, since I'm an organizer, it automatically publishes my question. Kind of nice. It's a great way to make an announcement. And then other organizers can come in or, and presenters and comment on it, or, and everyone can give it a reaction. That's kind of a nice way to kind of prioritize questions. I'm, gonna, I'm signed in as Megan on the second computer. So let me ask a question on her behalf. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, she is going to say, will we update return to work? And go ahead and post that. So since she is an attendee, her question will not appear here automatically. It shows up under review. And then a presenter has to go in and publish it. Then everyone can see it. Or we could even dismiss it if it's one that we didn't want to answer. I'll go ahead and publish grab the question. Yes, later this week, and go ahead and post my reply. So that moderated Q&A gives me a lot more control over what attendees can post and what other people can see. I could use that to curate questions for my executive. Again, I find it a little difficult to navigate in this narrow pane inside the Teams client. And so I like to that meeting details window and then I just got a little bit more screen real estate uh, to manage all of these. So moderating a big Teams event, you really can't have enough monitors or big enough monitors. Uh, but adding even one really makes a big difference if you're helping moderate the presentation. One final thought on the moderated Q&A. Consider using either the Q&A app or the meeting chat 
but not both. And the reason is it can be very confusing to attendees to have both tools live in the meeting. Um, they're not really sure where to put their questions. So I like to just disable the meeting chat and just use the Q&A if I'm doing a large meeting and, and need that moderation. Okay, let's go back to our list of best practices. So we let's zoom in. We added our Q&A. We're using polls to drive interaction. Just a couple final best practices here. Um, you'll notice I keep going back to this of opening up that meeting details and putting it on a second monitor. I find that is really helpful. I also always use the full Teams desktop app and try to be wired if at all possible. That ensures uh, just less network jitter, a little bit more resilient connection than being on wireless. I also use PowerPoint Live whenever possible. I think that gives more fidelity in rendering the presentation. Also, things like hyperlinks in the presentation are live and active. And finally, a good housekeeping slide really helps set the stage for letting attendees know how they can interact and can also remind you. Let's take a look at an example. Here's a standard welcome slide I use if I'm moderating a large meeting. Uh, it's a couple of reminders that I'd like to share with the attendees. The first is they can turn on live captions. That might make it a little bit easier to follow along with the presenter. They can use reactions to give feedback or raise their hand. And they should raise their hand if they have a question where they want to come off mute. Uh, we're also going to ask some questions with polls. They should watch for those, type in their answer, and click Submit. So if you were joining one of my sessions, I would cover this off in the first 30 seconds or so. I also record a lot of meetings, and so I use one more slide just to remind people, hey, this is going to be recorded. Uh, please leave now if you don't give consent. And I have a trick that's happening here. I deliberately put this in the deck to remind me to hit Start Recording. Have you ever been in a meeting and it's like 10 minutes into it and someone goes, oh, shoot, we meant to record this and they missed the whole introduction. So I like to kind of build a little bit of these housekeeping things into the content that I'm going to be seeing in front uh, with everyone else. Even though I've got a post-it note maybe on my monitor, a uh, sticky note guiding me, I find this is a little bit easier way to just make sure I don't forget something. So a good housekeeping slide, consistent housekeeping slide helps drive that meeting culture in an organization. So there's some quick tips on adding additional structure to a meeting to make it appropriate to be a large meeting, more than 300 people, and put some controls and guardrails in place to ensure it's a good experience. Everything I just showed you has a guided step-by-step -step walkthrough in the one pager. In the bottom right, there are links to the individual help articles that show how to do each one of those things. So I know I went through it very quickly. That'll take you a little slower as you go through. If there's just any one tip I want to leave you with, it's that you can access the meeting options as an organizer from within the meeting and adjust these tips on the fly. And then we do have our Teams Superheroes channel that I mentioned earlier. This is a team inside the Microsoft tenant that you can join. We've got about 1,400 customers several dozen Microsoft customer success managers. This is not a technical support venue. It's a community of adoption, best practice champions. And we just kind of share, this is on our journey. This is how our users are using Microsoft Teams. Here's a tool or a resource or a pattern or practice we found that was helpful. So if you go to aka.ms slash join superheroes, that takes you to a Microsoft Office form. Fill it out. Uh, we pick it up with Power Automate and we'll send you an invitation to the Super Hills community. Thank you so much for joining this Meeting Monday session on best practices for large structured meetings. Uh, again, the recording and all these resources are at aka.ms slash Mondays and also in the comment section for this video. Thank you so much. Have a great day.